Feeling good? So, Steve, I got something for you guys real quick. Come on over real quick. So, I heard that there's somebody out here that is their 16th birthday. And instead of having a sweet 16 party, they said, no, I want to be at the screen panel. This is a true story. All right? Her name is Renee. And she's sitting right here. And I just want you guys to know, and let's make sure it's really awkward, and that she has a lot of fun with this. So, Renee, why don't you stand up? Right, Renee, why don't you come up here? Yes, come up here, and then... Who's got two cameras? Your mom? Okay. Are we gonna sing happy birthday or what? Yeah. yeah? Alright, ready? One, two, three! Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you! you. Uh -huh. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday! Happy birthday. Happy birthday. That's the only singing I will ever do. That was too much. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, so, we usually do uh, Q&A a little different. So, um, we usually go to the audience right away instead of ask, answering a bunch of questions from the moderator, as lovely as it is. Um, we think it's an important, we think it's important for us to answer and, and get to what you guys want. So, if there's a question you guys have, who has, does anyone have a question? Oh, okay. And sometimes I do that and nobody raises their hand. All right, Hi. is it your question good? Because it's the first question and you, you've been holding your question since MegaCon? Oh my God. So anyway, uh, that question was for me, Steve. Oh, oh, oh. Was it a scream reference when you wiped the blade going after Mike? Um, am I cool or I say yes? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. Shit that they killed David Arquette. Who thinks Stu should still be alive and come back? I think I'm available. I'm available. You want this question? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Yeah, stand up. Turn around twice. That was only once. <laughs> All right, right? That's what it's like to do it. Oh, no. Uh, this is kind of for all of you. What was, like, your favorite moment in the franchise? Like, no matter what movie, no matter what character, like, what would be your favorite? 
when they killed Dewey. <laughs> it's so cool the way he died. <laughs> what is your favorite moment, Roy? Uh, I like when you say, uh, my mom's gonna kill me, man. <laughs> Um, I mean, I like, I mean, for me, the end of Scream 1, with the three of us, the four of us are in the kitchen. Yeah, that's good. I think that sequence for me is one of my favorite things I've ever done in my career, so for me, it's that. David, hit me with the phone, dick! <laughs> I'm not sure, like, uh, I mean, is it a personal? Are we talking my favorite moment in all the screens? Oh, uh, the ones that we were in. Like, personal, I guess. Like, if, personal. if, like, one that's sticking out to you. I mean, I... <laughs> you have to talk, Well, you know, I, I was very the Courtney Fox at one point. <laughs> and that was our first kiss, with, and, you know, all in love, all in love. And I do and now you guys coming back to the hotel. You <laughs> came back to the hotel that night, particularly glowing. <laughs> Drinks were flowing as well. It was quite a night. Oh, I don't know. Um, what's your favorite moment? Uh, I'm with you. I think the ending was just such a blast of energy and, and something that you and I have been waiting to release. So, uh, that. However many years we took to shoot the end of that movie it was, was, a, was a blast. Um, I don't know, I mean, all this stuff personally that happened offset, uh, you know, us all hanging out together, that was probably more memorable in my mind than the stuff we did on set. Yes, I agree with that. All right, next question. Do you have a question? Um, so this is mainly for Matthew, but anybody else can answer. Out of all the characters in the person. Aquarius. <laughs> that is my joke. You cannot steal my joke. All the characters in person that you've learned to put out throughout the years, which one relates to Matthew the most? Well, who uh, uh, who relates to uh, Yeah, you know, Ski. None of his characters related to Matthew. <laughs> All of his characters are handsome and dangerous. <laughs> uh, um, it's gotta be as I see Paul Bolshev. Steve, I mean, that is so good, bro. I know I'm not gonna visit. That's how you look all the time. So young, so young, so hopeful, so uh, striking. I'm super committed to finding this um, really exuberant and very love love snacks to orientation. And I'm also the cow. Right. Next question. I got one right up here from a man who looks just like Shaggy. Ready? What's your name? Lupus. Thank you. Alright, 
What you got, man? Uh, you're very right. <laughs> Do you have a question? Is it a good question? Next question. <laughs> so my question is for Roy. So what was your favorite scene from your movie? Favorite scene from the movie he was in from Screen 4? Okay, so Roy, what was your favorite scene from Screen 4? Um, I think, uh, stabbing Kirby. I was gonna say killing, but I just said it's a Uh, yeah, that enjoyed that uh, very much. <laughs> Wait, you were the one to see the gleam in his eyes. What? The gleam in his eyes. <laughs> okay. Do you have a What's your mother understand? Matt. Matt, that's right. Sorry, Matt. Um, do you have a question? Yeah, I got one. So I'm going to go over here to, uh, to David and Roy. So Roy, we know that the other three guys here are OGs from the very first screen and they have history there. When you were brought up in screen four, did David help to bring you into the fold or was David one of those guys that was like, we're going to end the shooting? Yeah, David was really cool, really friendly the whole time. I do wish, honestly, I thought I should have killed him. <laughs> I was kind of pissed that I wasn't the one to take his lunch. More believable. <laughs> Sorry. No, I mean, no. So David, for you, when you doing these multiple movies and seeing new cast people come in and say, okay, this guy's going to be the next guy's face, do you kind of have a standard? You're like, okay, boy, you've got to really ramp it up. If you're going to be the ghost face, you've got to live up to the expectations of these other guys to make sure that you're continuing the role. But did you help? Did you help people like him to kind of raise the game? Uh, I mean, I like I do more things like behind the scenes, like kind of bonding stuff. Where we all go like we threw an incredible party up in Ann Arbor uh, for his birthday, twenty first birthday. So like things like that. I, I taught everybody Bob Ross uh, classes in school. The whole cast I taught them because I'm a certified Bob Ross instructor. So I, 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 I teach them Bob Ross's wet on wet technique. <laughs> That's what it's called. And there's a certification process? Yes, it takes three weeks in New Smyrna Beach, Florida, and you two can be a Bob Ross instructor. What other facts about you? be surprised to know. Uh, I got a gold record for screen two or three? Or screen three, I think? Or screen two. Screen two, yeah. I got a gold record with my band uh, year 2000. Because <laughs> Wes, Wes was so sweet and supportive and wanted to get on the soundtrack. <laughs> what about, can you talk a little about Bonsai? Yeah, Bozo. I love Bozo the Clown my whole life. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I just love happy clouds. I love all clouds. I love scary clouds. I love all the clouds. But scary clouds were just taking over all the, you know, air in the room. So we just want to bring back some happy clouds. <laughs> That's sort of the goal of the documentary. Um, you know, we shot this documentary, it should be out soon, we're just wrapping up the editing. But, um, yeah, it's about bringing the happy clowns back in. We got into music, a lot of music in this one. So, I hope people enjoy it. It's really been a challenge. Me. It's not an easy, easy thing at all. It's been stressful. If you, if you don't know, David went out and purchased the, the intellectual property rights of Bozo the Clown. So, David owns Bozo the Cloud. Uh, yeah, and he's doing a performance tomorrow night. Bozo will be here. He's traveling the universe right now, but he'll be here tomorrow night. <laughs> it's very exciting. And when I was traveling in the airport, I was going through with the Bozo butt bag, like the punching clowns, you know? And, but they, they, they made me unpack all my bags and they thought I had a bomb because there's sand at the bottom of this plastic thing and it's in this box. And they thought it was, it was a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so
so Steve and uh, Steve and David, I've got a question for you about Matthew Lillard. Yeah. So those of you that were here at the last book out, there's a little famous scene where there was a girl that came up to the mic and she started to have, she was close to having a panic attack at the mic. Matthew jumped off the stage, he went down to her, he actually gave her a hug, and they started that, uh, she, she calmed down and all that. So my question for you two about him is, what makes this guy such a likable guy? Dude, I was grabbing her ass. <laughs> he really is just so charming, so kind. He's got his heart in the right place. He's always been really, uh, I don't know, just soft. Just a real, you know, great person. He's the kind of guy, too, that puts his money where his mouth is, you know. He, he doesn't just say that. Uh, he does good things on a daily basis for people. Um, he's one of the sweetest human beings I know, and an example of what I think we all as human beings should strive to be, very giving, you know, he's the kind of guy that will change your day. Um, I think we can all do that for each other, but he, he lives and breathes it, so we all know that. Lori, what, what else do you have to say about me? <laughs> because if we go over 29 minutes, then Sean is probably going to come up here and he's going to drop kick me off the stage. Okay. So we have a while. Um, who has a question? You look drunk. <laughs> What's your question? Um, I have a question for Steve. Do you have the scar or neck statue with the umbrella? Um, you know, no, it's not real, right? <laughs> There was no real wound there, to be honest. It was more a fearful thing because I had, I had had open heart surgery and, and it was very close to that spot that she hit. But she didn't break skin or anything. It was just a terrifying enough moment for Wes to use it. So, but no, I'm fine. Thank you, though. <laughs> Do you have a question? I was asking Is me. Next question. <laughs> she broke up with me and I got even. <laughs> Actually, you know, the truth of the matter is that, you know, Kevin Williamson was at the 25th anniversary. And so he stood up at the screening and said, hey, who killed who? And it was very specific. He sort of laid out um, his theories about who killed who. And Kevin said, I don't have any idea who killed him. It was never discussed. Wes doesn't know. I don't know. So the answer is whatever you want the answer to be. But, but I think I killed Wes. <laughs> um, no, one of the theory is that Stu Martin is still alive. If you had the had the perfect scenario on bringing Steve back into the story, what would it be? Well, you gotta tell him. Start with the prison bit. Oh, yeah. So I have a fantasy about getting really jacked, like steroids, like Avenger style. So I'm kind of into that. So I think he's been in jail and I'm gonna come out ripped. <laughs> It's going to take two years, but it's going to be incredible. Scream 10. And it comes out, it's just a drag queen. Which would be amazing. <laughs> Ski, what's your drag name? What's my what? Drag name. Ooh. I think it's Boots and Bellows. <laughs> well, right? Unfinished basement. Is perfect. <laughs> David? I'm gonna go with Alexis's drag name, Eva Destruction. Oh my goodness. So good. What about you? 
Shaggy. Shaggy Bottoms. Shaggy Bottoms. Write that shit down. Don't drive. It will be Shaggy Bottoms. Alright, who has a question? Unless everyone has their hand up in this room. You ready? Yeah. Uh -huh. 
is this bag of gummy bears? Uh, is that 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 could you sell it for fifty dollars worth of gummy bears? Yeah. If you can make like seventeen hundred dollars off of this gigantic garbage truck size bag, maybe. Yeah, I can sell gummy bears. By the way, I still want to say, want to say thank you to the sign language interpreter. Thank you for doing that. I feel like we've got to go back. We need more questions. Yeah, no problem. So I got a couple, and we'll see if we can take them off from up here. Okay. So, uh, so David, we talked about you being uh, killed off in five, and I'm able to come back in six. How difficult was it for you to be able to see six come out in its totality without you having a role in that movie? I don't know. It was hard, but I love, I love the franchise, so it was like really fun to watch too. I miss Ned, obviously. Uh, so I enjoyed it. I think it's fun. And it's, yeah. well, Steve, what about for you? Because you get to play a role in five and six where you were just haunting your daughter and you helped her propel that storyline. Was it fun for you to be there but kind of like in this otherworldly vibe? Did you get to interact with the rest of the crowd now and kind of help bring them along in the, the screen world or was your part pretty much off to its own? Uh, well, in five, that was during COVID and um, they had me come in on the very last day of production. So a lot of people were still there. Davey was not, I think he had just left um, Wilmington, North Carolina. And so I got to I got to work with Melissa and you know um, and that was a blast. And, uh, but I wasn't I didn't get much of the camaraderie side, so, you know, like hanging with everybody and stuff. So that was a little you know, sad. Um, in six, I was I was only on set a couple hours, um, and it was just me on the green screen. So uh, yeah, I mean it's not quite the experience you look for, but it was fun to be a part of it, and um, and you know, and to be brought back. I mean, I you know, it's a hallucination because uh, I know some people get confused thinking it's a ghost. It was a hallucination. It's it's inside your head. Um, it was it was a blast. I mean, I, I, I was scared to do it initially. I feel like that's something that I'm way too old for, so I wasn't sure how it would work. Um, and uh, they made me feel very comfortable with it, though. So I had a good time. Yeah, I think I think it all comes out very organic, and it makes sense for you to be there. It didn't feel like it was just bringing you back to put you in high school or some nonsense yeah. like that. It felt very organic. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so for the four of you guys, we'll give you guys an easy con style question. Excluding the four people that are on the capsules right now, who is your favorite person to work with in screen and why? Nev Campbell. Yeah, she's, she's amazing. She's a great actress. She's a great person. She's with us most of the time, but she's a uh, love. She's fantastic. What about for the rest of you? Who's your favorite person to work with that's not sitting up here on the couch? In screen. I've never done it, so I'm genuinely happy that she's good. I'd have to say Gordy because we had so many seats together. Okay, how about this? How about this for you, Gordy? Who is your favorite person to work with that at no point in your life were you ever married to? But I think I'd be best too. We always had such like a cool, you know, do his like her older brother and both like. She lost her best friend, I lost my sister. Steve, are we gonna make this like a four for four? I know, I mean, I it's, yeah, I mean, certainly, certainly Nev um, is, is, is at the height of that. Um, Melissa was also very How about sweet. Melissa, by the way? Melissa's fantastic. If you get a chance to meet her, she's great. Yeah, she's fantastic. She's a sweet, sweet soul and uh, very talented. Um, yeah, obviously Nev, I spent a lot more time with her and, and, you know, years ago, but, but Melissa's up there as well. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. No running, no insanity. I want five people to get in front of this mic here really quick. Just five. Once there's five, I want you guys to sit down. Only five people. If you're, you're in the back, five. you're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> so just five people, okay? So, we're going to start right here. Five that are up here. Give us your name. Alright, uh, so can we turn the, uh, the, the stage mic on, or the, uh, the, 
Hey, yeah. Michael Donovan. Oh, you know what? Oh, we can have him jump off the stage. Cartwheels are not jumping. <laughs> the ship breaks. <laughs> Dude, this is scary, bro. Hey, what's your name? My name's Duncan. Hey, Duncan, I'm Matt. What's your question? My question is, I know you're a big board game geek. I am. And do you think Shelly would also be a big board game geek? I do, yes. <laughs> do you think you and her would be best friends? We, we are almost the same person, maybe. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> he, he never mind that. <laughs> okay, what's your question? My question is uh, for all of you guys, really, is uh, mainly for, <laughs> so, for all of you guys that are doing this new franchise, like, do you see it like, doing a finality? Do we see a finale being done? Yes. Yeah. So he's not asking. He's not asking. How would you write it? He's saying, no, no, no. Do you ever see there being a finale? You think it's going to just keep on going? I, you know, I don't. I don't think they would write it that way. Just money, 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 money. I mean, I, as long as it continues to make money, they're going to continue to find a way to tell the story. It's my feeling. I don't. I think Ghostface is like crossed over into like the iconic horror, you know, killers or whatever. So I think, you know, that almost allows it to go on. You know, I'd love to see it like, get really bad. You know what I mean? Like those really bad ones that are good. I mean, I guess we did that with Scream Maker for. But, uh, but uh, that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Where they get really campy and crazy. I don't know. Something about that's really fun. But it also is kind of like, uh, but then I also like to see a really super dark, creepy version that's not like Scream at all. Just some psychopath. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a hold alone, like, slasher movie that's just super scary. But it's just a slasher and it's just a ghost face guy coming after him. I don't know. That's just me. <laughs> What's your question? What's your name? I'm Maddox. I'm Maddox. What's your question? Um, so I have a couple things real quick. Um, first off, just thank you guys. You make so much money. You guys are awesome, so thank you. Uh, second, I'm going to be also going to find a twice for the same thing. And you rub it in with your knife. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Speaking of finance movies, I was going to ask you this at any time. I have some questions about how I can find it. It's completely okay now.
Yeah. He's not a dog door. That was just such a different way to kill someone. And then when she was hanging there, I was like, I think they killed David and scream 12 was great. Um, how much more, how many more minutes do we have? We could probably get like one or two more questions. Oh, All right, who's, who's, don't, whoever has a question, don't screw this up. There's only two left. And then everyone will hit you. So you get one question per person. There's like a cheetah back here. What are you dressed, what are you dressed as? <laughs> it's the most incredible. Can, ever, can you stand up real quick? He's literally, he's literally the most incredible cheetah I've ever seen. Thank you, cheetah. That's amazing. I am going to be here too. I like you guys really like it. Alright, what's your question? Oh, oh, I thought you had a question. Thank you. 